that's the reason that companies put labels on like plastic bags and stuff to keep them away from six-year-olds for choking. It was that bad. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone, to another installment of the Amateur Sports Focus Podcast. I'm Kai. And I'm Frank. And today is probably going to be a very, very football-heavy episode, as there was so much that went on in the NFL Week 1. Uh, yep. Too many bad things in my mind that happened, but I guess we'll get into that. But before we start, make sure that you check us out on TikTok, Instagram. Make sure you follow us everywhere, whether that's YouTube or Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, everywhere you get your podcasts. So, yep. what do you want to start with? Let's start with the early slate of games, uh, the Bengals and the okay. Steelers. And well, the actually, Texans no, hold up. We have to go to the Thursday night. We have to, we have to start with Thursday night. We ah, didn't have to talk about Thursday that. Night. Because we Thursday recorded night. last Thursday. And yep. if you guys go back to that episode, my prediction was over four turnovers. I said Matthew Stafford was going to throw two picks, Josh Allen would throw at least one, and there would be a fumble. And what do you know? I was exactly correct. So just throwing yep. that out there. I did choose the wrong winner of the game, but I still got the turnover prediction correct. I also did choose the wrong winner. I wonder what our record is for picking the teams this week. I don't know yet. I'm going to calculate it after this, but then I'll, I'll, throw them, okay. I'll throw them up on the screen right now, and then we, we can show everyone, and then we'll talk about it next week because we'll predict again this yep. week. But, oh, gosh, that game was insane. And, like, I expected the Rams to actually score more points than 10. Yeah. Which was – so yeah. bad. It showed a it showed a lot of signs of Ken, Kevin O'Connell not being there, being with the Vikings, showing how that offense co- cooperate now. Did not look good I at mean, all. Their offense him. was only Cooper Cup, and Cooper Cup did amazing. Obviously, he had over a hundred receiving yards, had the most receptions of any player. Yep. But when he's covered, he, Stafford threw it to the Buffalo Bills, and not any of the Rams players was the problem. They could not get anything started, and the yeah. absence of Cam Those Akers elbows were was definitely astounding. showing some signs right there. It looks like they were trying to use a running back, which was just OJ Simpson while he was in prison. Like he went three rushing attempts for zero yards. So bad. But yeah, Bills game, Rams game. Absolutely wild, but yeah. And then, so what you're saying, let's move into the early slate games because those were also insane. So we want to talk about there. Yes, it was insane. I want to talk about uh, the missed snaps and the kicking this whole day. Oh my gosh. The kicking looked, it was like they took six-year-old soccer players and said, that's a football, kick it. That was it. No one could hit a kick. No one could snap the ball correctly to their holder. I could have done better. I, I've never kicked a field goal in my life. I just could have scored three points on Sunday, more so than any other NFL kicker in my mind. It was so bad. It's just normally kickers yeah. are seen as like automatic. Just like you put them out there, oh, we're going to score three points. Oh, we're going to score an extra point. Nope. It was it was insane this this week and Joe Bro did not look good at all. Oh, I mean, how can you look good when you throw four interceptions and have a fumble to your own name? His first pass was a pick six. If that doesn't tell you how the Bengals season is going to go, I don't know what will. I'm not going to say it, but I'm going to say it. Fluke that they were in the Super Bowl last year. Everyone can come at me. But that is exactly what it showed on Sunday when they lose to their division rivals who you should be planning for in the entire offseason and you go out and do that. Oh, it should be an embarrassment to Joe yeah. Burrow's name. I mean, Joe it was is bad. No more. Yeah. yeah, it was bad. It was pretty bad. But uh, it made it fun, though. I don't even know. They shouldn't even have gone close to even winning that game. Oh, it made it such an interesting game. Not at yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that you win, you had like how many? The the Steelers had no turnovers, did they? I don't think they did. No, I don't think they. I don't think they did. And and Cincinnati had five. Yeah, exactly. And the Bengals had five, and they were within a kick 
within an extra point of winning the game because Jamar Chase scores an, a touchdown on the last two seconds of the game to tie yeah. it. And then Evan McPherson has his kick block by Micah Fitzpatrick, who already had a day. He had to pick six on the day. Granted, he had a bunch of like unnecessary roughness penalties because that's just who he is. But he still he blocked that kick to send them into overtime. Yeah, and uh, T.J. Watt had a game too, and but he got injured. But thankfully, he'll be back. He did. He did. Yeah. Six weeks though, but six weeks for a torn pec is pretty insane. I mean, that just shows yeah. you how much of a beast that man is, where he can rip an entire muscle and say, "Eh." I'll come back, and I'll still lead the league in sacks just because that's what he does. Yep, and then the Houston and Colts game ending in a tie. Oh, my gosh. Ending in a tie when Jonathan Taylor runs for, like, 8,000 miles? How does that make any sense? Well, the Colts, they haven't won a game, of a season opener game, in, like, seven, eight years. So I guess history yep, just repeated. It's going to continue. Today. It's not a loss. Yeah, exactly. It's not a loss, but they definitely didn't win. Yeah. So, I mean, it was – In my mind, that it's Matt a loss. Ryan, it is. To the Texans, the Texans are supposed to be the last, if not the second to last team in the NFL this year, just based on talent. But the yeah. first is supposed to be the Atlanta Falcons, who yet again choked, choked another. another huge lead. They kept Jameis Winston to 12 passing yards until halfway through the third quarter. 12. He had 21 total yards. He had 12 passing yards and nine rushing yards. And yet the Saints won that game. You can't let that happen. If you're taking an event, Jameis Winston is one of the best, or not one of the best. He is a deep ball thrower. And you keep him yep. to 12 yards. If he hits Chris Olave or Jarvis Landry for one pass, it could go for 46. And they keep him to 12 yards and they still find a way to lose when they were up by what, like 18, I think it was? That's terrible. I mean, it just yeah, it it shows like you what Atlanta is. Yeah, it shows you what Atlanta is as a franchise, and that is just a choking squad. It's That's the reason that companies put labels on, like, plastic bags and stuff to keep them away from six-year-olds for choking. It was that bad. Yeah. Yeah, Jarvis Landry had a day, too. <laughs> Jarvis, you know who actually had a day on that Saints squad? Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas. He did great. Michael Thomas had Michael two Thomas touchdowns. Yeah. And guess how many yards and touchdowns were off of slants? Zero. Slant man might be no more. He might be an actual wide He's receiver now. Dog. He's a dog. Yeah. I mean, sure, he got surgery six months late so he couldn't play in the NFL season last year, and maybe, sure, he is the most vocal person about him being a good player when he's not even on the field, but he showed it. He He's not going to bring back the Michael Thomas, Drew Brees days of him having 8 million receptions, but if he keeps doing this, he's a, he's a red zone threat because he's huge and he's strong. So yeah. if he can keep doing this, yeah, and he if he can not make everyone in the world hate him for the stuff he posts on Twitter, then, hey, I think that we're, the Saints might be poised for a great season with him. Yeah. And uh, Cordell Patterson, fantasy beast this week, really helped me out. Yeah. And, I mean, he's the running back one on his team, yeah. so I'd imagine so, even though the team's not great. He's Damian still, Williams just got injured. What the, the, problem, the problem is – how come they didn't pass to Cordero Patterson? He's well, they, literally he, he's so played he three attempts. different positions on that own team. Yeah, but he, he's had four attempts, and two of them were deep balls. So if we can, so if those connect another day, he, I mean, that's that's huge for me since I have him. Yeah, that is he, true. They try I to mean, connect. Yeah, again, they try to connect deep. He's one of the biggest, fastest people in the NFL. And he's mm-hmm. literally played three positions for the Falcons. Well, four, technically. He's like running back, wide receiver, five, actually, because he's lined up as a tight end. He's a kick returner, and he played cornerback twice. So, yeah. I mean, the dude can do it all. Why not get him the ball in his hands? Because he has the ability to run someone over and then outrun a safety. It yeah, just, and I hate, it amazes I hate me. that people are down on Cordell, too. Because Cordell for fantasy is just a guy that I feel like you need. I don't think they're down on him. I don't think they're down on him. I think they just 
don't think he can produce at the same high level as he did last year. I think that's a difference. Which is fair. And I actually don't think yeah. he's doing kick returns. He isn't anymore, which makes sense at his age. Yeah. I mean, he's done it for a super long time, but that's like that's the way to get injured is yeah. you catch a pass, someone hits you in the knee, and you're done. So, mm. Or you catch a kick and someone hits you in the knee, and you're done. So it's probably smart that the Falcons are keeping him from doing that. Granted, they might be losing out because he is one of the best, if not the best, kick returner of recent times. In that, and he was talking about trying to break uh, the record for Devin Hester, and they're not even putting in my kick returner. Yeah. So I thought he Maybe was going to play, he, he's but he didn't. Their, it's probably because he's their bona fide RB1 this year. Like last year, they had Mike Davis to take some of the early downs. But now that it's just Cordero yeah. Patterson, because Tyler Algier didn't even play. He was a, a healthy scratch. So they literally had no one but else to throw out there Williams behind him. So if he gets injured, injured you're done. Yeah, and Damian exactly. got so injured too. Throw so. him out there, you're done. Yep. yep. Smart by them. But then that takes us. Well, actually, no, because were the, were the Dolphins an early slate game? Dolphins and Patriots were in the early slate game. Um, Why don't you I take this? Because that's that your, your. Yep. Okay, let's hear it. So I was watching. Uh, pretty good start. Defense looks the same. Uh, they look quick, fast, and they're young. And. Xavier that, Howard that interception still looks in the to be end guy. zone was amazing. Exactly. Yeah. Xavier yeah, Howard with Xavier the Howard still that nice guy. little bat into the arms of who was it? That call was a little generous. What's his name again? Devontae, it was on Devontae yeah. Parker, and it, Javon Holland picked it off. Javon Holland, yeah. that's what it was. But yeah. it, it was a pass interference, a little bit. Not going to lie, but it was a good play. And. I mean, I like the defense. Brandon Jones, the best blitzing safety in the league, probably behind Jamal Adams, but a strip okay, fumble I was about to, to score. Say Jamal Adams, but... yeah, yeah, a strip fumble to score. He Offense... rocked them. Yeah. yeah, he did. Offense looked pretty good. I mean, if you saw like the whole game and how their formations were, they were flipping it off to running backs, throwing it to the fullback for a deep bomb. Like that's such a Mike McDaniel thing to do. I was going to say, I mean, that, that, that comes from a Kyle Shanahan offense right there. I can tell yeah. you that. I mean, it is crazy. I mean, but how we use Tyreek, we, we 12 targets, 8 catches, 94 yards. I mean, you can't really complain about that. Yeah. I mean, dude's a difference. I mean, the only and thing Jaylen you can complain Waddle. about that is that Ty- yeah, Tyreek Hill's highlights were him basically picking off cornerbacks because Tua was throwing it into cornerbacks. Like that one one handed grab he had, that was in well, that was what's one. his face's arms. Nah, there were yeah. some other pretty bad passes. That type of kill made not, up. Of, not I really. just kicked so much <laughs> across my room. <laughs> uh, but not the Tyreek. Anyway, uh, he made it. Tua did make a couple bad, uh, uh, one or two bad decisions that he made last year, but there was definitely mm-hmm. improvement. Definitely improvement. I mean, I mean he, finished, he finished the game with zero interceptions, which is Yeah, I mean, good. With 23 for 33, a touchdown, and 270 yeah. yards. I mean, that's a pretty decent game, if you ask yeah. me. And yeah, really complain game, about that. Yeah, the passing game with Chase Evans and stuff, he looks to be a guy. He looked really good. And Rohit Mostert, yeah. off that catch, he stumbled, broke like two tackles, got for a first down. It, See, I mean, the run game Raheem looks good. Rohit yeah, Raheem Mostert is one of the best running backs in the NFL when he's healthy. His only problem has been staying on the field. He has yeah. the highest yards per carry in NFL history, and that's even with 300-plus rushing attempts. Like, It's yeah. not like he's a just, you throw him in, he runs Brady six yards, and then he's done for the game. That's it. He, he runs well consistently because he's just so quick, and, and, and he can stay on his feet. And when he did get the uh, run the ball, he got a first down on first and 10 every time. Exactly. I mean, because he's just that efficient. That's the same thing with Miles yeah. Sanders. Miles, Miles Sanders, Sanders is really one of the good. most efficient running backs in the in the NFL, but the Eagles never use him or haven't until on Sunday when he went berserk. He had like a hundred something yeah. yards. He had a touchdown. Jalen Hurts had zero passing touchdowns, but he had a rushing mm-hmm. touchdown, and which it basically describes what the Eagles' offense is. I'm going to throw it super far. We're going to get in close, and we're going to run it in, and it works every time. That AJ and Brown. They had a good game. Special. Oh yeah, and every time that AJ Brown catches a ball and breaks six tackles and runs for an extra twelve yards, I always think like, oh, 
That's just a highlight real play. That is just AJ Brown. He's yeah. so big. He's so strong. He can't be taken down when he has the ball in his hands. Yeah, Eagles got a good one. Jalen Hurts has such a big help, and they scored four rushing touchdowns with four different running backs. Crazy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that offense is a running game. I mean, they showed it. And but the, don't yeah, let's not forget did. about the Lions. They no, fought. Okay, no, no, no. The, the, what, it was yeah. The Lions had a good game against them, yeah, and like everyone was game. like rooting for them, obviously because of hard knocks. But they showed it because there have been they times where the Lions were like. Oh, this is this is America's team because they suck, and then they show that they suck. Today they didn't do that, which was a good and, thing. And Eagles are like a a playoff potential Super Bowl kind of team now with the I Cowboys think so. uh, with the, all the acquisitions yeah. in the off season. I mean, yeah, now with the Cowboys, the Cowboys without Cowboys Dak, sucking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're Big I time. mean they're looking pretty good. I think so too. The com- the Commanders are us... pretty good with wins. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but then that brings us to the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> I'll let you take away with that facing, one. I'll sip my drink. Facing division rivals, the Minnesota Vikings, the Green Bay Packers, mind you, without Devontae Adams after the blockbuster trade in the off season. So this is how things go. The Vikings start off with the ball. And Justin Jefferson gets a touchdown because he's Justin Jefferson. He's one of the best, if not the best, young wide receivers in the NFL. So then, okay, I I accept that, that, okay, Justin Jefferson scored on us. But then we get on the field, and Aaron Rodgers lets one rip down the sideline. Perfect pass to Christian Watson right through the hands. That man went to a milk factory with how much butter was on his fingers. I swear to God, it was so bad. You could start your NFL career with a 75-yard touchdown against your division rival and you dropped the ball. None that of that drop game was on changed, Aaron Rodgers. That drop changed the whole game. The whole game. It did. Absolutely. If you start like that, then it's a shootout. Then it's firepowered offense against firepowered offense. It's not trying to throw little two-yard passes because none of your wide receivers can catch the ball. It's insane. Yeah. None of that game was on Aaron Rodgers. It was so bad. And, like, a I'm a diehard issue. Packers fan. But at the end, I didn't even want to watch. I was like, I can't suffer through this. So as soon as they brought Jordan Love in because they knew they were going to lose, I was like, I'm done. I'm turning this off. Last year, I watched every single minute of every single Packers game. This year, I started off by only watching three quarters because they suck so bad. And I yeah. know that they're going to come back because I know they're playing the Bears this week. And they playing the Bears after a loss going wild but the bears in the rain they look like a fun team to watch i mean that could be that could be a watch i mean you guys are the packers you guys will probably come back but bears are a little sleeper right now but you guys are gonna come no okay if that's what you think they're gonna we're gonna beat them i mean i think we're gonna beat them by over 10 points this year this week well yeah well just like how you turned it off after the third quarter, that's how what I did after the Florida Kentucky game. But I don't even want to talk about that. That game made me really upset. So moving on to that. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I mean, last night. Yep. Broncos, Seahawks, Broncos country. You know, left wide. Let's Gino rap. Smith. This rat. Is the new Russell Wilson. I mean, maybe Geno Smith has found his place. He's been all around the all around the NFL. He's been passed around so much. And yet Seahawks won the trade. Just wanna let that out. Seahawks yeah. won the trade. I think so. I mean, Geno Smith beats <laughs> Russell Wilson with basically a quarter as many passing yards. But Broncos lose. And honestly, coaching decisions is the problem. If you haven't worked running from the one, pass the ball. You have one of the best quarterbacks in the game. And then to bleed your clock down and then call a time and kick a second. Like, it would have been the second longest field goal in NFL history. And Brandon McManus has not ever kicked a field goal over 62 yards. And you try to do that. Yeah, he was close. So, but not the right play call. He was close. Ow. But that no, the right you, it's fourth and five. 
You have one of the best quarterbacks in the game. You get an extra five yards. You call a timeout. You get another three yards because you have Javante Williams, who is a beast back there. You get another eight, and then you're closer to a 35-yard field goal. Yeah. Javante Williams had the second most receptions. Yeah, he had the second most receptions in the NFL, and he's a running back. Yeah. Other than that That fumble, he did really good. That's true, but again, he's young. They were hitting hard, so what do you expect? And they knew he was running because they're on the one. As soon as they yeah. see Russell Wilson turn like this, they're blasting towards Javante Williams. But yeah. it's whatever. So do you want to get into we, uh, a little bit of uh, predictions for this week? Yes, I was actually – I had I had the schedule up, and I was getting ready to ask you that. Okay, let's well, we let's got. do it. So, do you want to you want to host it now? Since I did it last week. Um, sure, I'll host it. Okay. All right. Because it's the first thing that popped up, uh, Dolphins Ravens. Now, um, I don't even know what to pick. As a Dolphins fan, obviously, I want them to win. But Ravens, I mean, we beat them last year, but that's last year. I am, and we're in Baltimore this time. It's going to be really tough. I'm going tough. Ravens. I'm going Ravens. I, I'm, I mean, I'm just going to go with the old faithful, the Dolphins. Hopefully, they can okay, pull it out. If so, yeah. I if no, the Dolphins I have can pull it out, you that's, the this Dolphins, is a statement game. So. Yeah. This is a statement game I think for the so Dolphins. Too. I mean, see obviously, really you're better up. than the Patriots. Yeah, exactly, because it's two sort of similar systems. It's a lot of running, so it'll be – yeah. Someone to see. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. And now we got the uh, the Jets and the Browns. Joe Flacco's quarterback, by the way. Browns. Okay. Yep. Nick I Jones got the Browns run too. Six thousand yards. And it's Colts at the Jags. Now, if you rem- remember last Colts. year, the I know. Col- if you remember last year, the Colts. Okay, Jonathan you got him? Taylor is going to injure their entire team. Okay. Well. I'm going with the Jags. Okay. Now we got Bucks and the Saints. Now we know how these Bucks. usually go in the regular. You still going with the Bucks? Oh wait. Oh wait. Good point. It's in New Orleans. I'm going with the Here's Saints. Here's the thing. C.J. Gardner Johnson is no longer on the team, and he picked him off twice last year. So maybe that makes a difference. I'm still. I'm going to go Bucks just to separate okay, our Bucks? records. Okay, I'm going Saints. Okay. Okay. Now we got the the Panthers and the Giants. The Giants looked really good. Panthers, I know, but Panthers. Well, Panthers. Panthers. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go with, with the Panthers. Giants. It's at okay. it's at New York, so I'm gonna go with the Giants. Yeah, still Panthers. Now we got now this one's a toss up for me. It's the Patriots mm-hmm. and the Steelers, but it's at Pittsburgh. Steelers, then I think that Steelers. makes a difference. Okay. Yeah, I have Here, Pittsburgh. We speed through these. Yeah, I have Pittsburgh because Mac Jones. But even though Mac Jones is going to be good, Bill Belichick is a coach. So, okay. Yeah. And now we got the four o'clock games: the Falcons and the Rams. Rams, definitely. Rams, yes. Rams and, by fifty. Yep. Texans and Broncos. Broncos over the Texans. I know they Broncos. didn't have a great showing, and but they did just but Broncos. I got the Broncos, and we got the Cardinals and the Raiders. Cardinals. I think, well, yeah, Cardinals. That's in my mind. Okay, I got the Raiders. It's at Las Vegas, just to let you know. Yeah. Okay, now this one, advantage. I think this one's a little bit easier now, but if Dak was still playing, it's the Bengals and the Cowboys. Okay, Bengals. Whoever is the not Bengals. the Cowboys. Cowboys are terrible. And do I even need to say which one? Uh, the Bears or the Packers? Packers. I'm going with the Packers <laughs> as well. And then the Monday night game. The Titans and the Bills. I got the Bills. 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 And then 100%. the Vikings and the Eagles. It's a two Monday night game. Vikings. I think. Yeah, I did. I did see that, but I think the Vikings. I don't bandwagon them. I, I have the them, Eagles. But the Vikings are going to win. I have the Eagles. Okay. It's going to be a high scoring game, in my opinion. But and it's at Philly and Jalen Hurts and AJ Brown. Mm-hmm. I like where it's going. Got you. And that well, was it with the games I mean, we'll for this see. week. Nice. So, yeah, this has been, been another installment of the Amateur Sports Focus Podcast. I'm Kai. I'm Frank.
So be it's sure to follow us everywhere. Hopefully next week's good. It was great. I think so too. Be sure to follow us everywhere: YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, everything. Yeah, I think that I I won all four of my matchups this week, but time to send it off. So have a good week. Peace. Peace.